Okay, well, welcome to question three from the end of chapter six, Fundamentals of Particle Technology. And this is all about uh, an existing continuous thickener, uh, repurposing it to uh, thicken 2,400 tonnes per 24 hours. Just move that. Um, of uh, a flocculated slurry material which is 10% solids by mass and we're given the conversion uh, that that is 3.7% by volume. The solids density quite high 2,900 kilograms per meter cubed and we have one single batch settling test and um, the idea is to try and work out what the underflow concentration will be uh, given these conditions. I say it's repurposing a an existing five metre diameter thickener to take this design requirement of flocculated slurry. Um, and the batch sedimentation test would have been obtained in the laboratory using something like a measuring cylinder. Right, well there are two key concepts that we're going to be using to solve this problem, so uh, let's discuss those. They have been used with previous questions at the end of chapter one, but I, I would need to uh, just revise them uh, here. Um, and here is our example of a thickener with feed material coming in, um, F, F for feed just here, C naught is the volume concentration, and we've also got density on it just here. Uh, putting all these two together, F is meters cubed per second, C naught is volume per volume dimensionless, uh, rho s is kilograms per meter cubed. That gives us a flow of kilograms per second of material coming in. By and large, we won't be um, considering the density simply because it cancels out. If we're going to do a flux balance, it cancels out. So typically for a flux, we'll be talking about f times by c naught, um, which of course is going to be meters cubed per second of solids okay so that you you might be seeing that used um throughout um okay so here is our flux balance which we talked about on the last question so this is the amount of material uh, entering the thickener f times c naught meters cubed per second and if the thickener is working correctly all of those solids are going to end up in the underflow they're going to end up coming out just here and nothing is going to come out in the overflow okay apart from the liquid you know so that has zero percent solids uh, volume to volume because we just need clear liquid to come out if the process is working correctly so if f times c naught meters cube per solids is going in then the underflow has to be t Cu, where Cu is the underflow concentration, and T is actually a velocity. It's the uh, velocity that's induced by the underflow withdrawal, and that's a constant value throughout the whole of the thickener. So whatever height you are inside the thickener, there's this induced velocity T downwards due to the fact that we're taking solids out from the bottom of the thickener. Now why is that a velocity and not a volume uh, flow rate? Because we've got area. So T times by A is exactly that, the volume flow rate. So T times by A times by Cu is what's going to be coming out meters cubed per solids, but that enables us to take the area out, make it the subject of the equation. And of course, A is what we're after. It's the plan area of a thickener, if we're doing a thickener design. But this is, a, this is actually an existing thickener. So it's not really a thickener design. But hey, you know, that this flux balance still works. It means that we can actually rearrange the equation here to give us an equation for uh, TCU. Okay, which is the design variable that we're after. Uh, and that, of course, is going to be F C naught, the flux of solids going into the thickener, divided by A. 
because we have an existing thickener of a certain area. So that's what we'll be using in this particular question. Okay, so that's the first key concept, all about the flux bounds, and the important equation is 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 really this one just here. This is the equation that we'll be using that comes from a flux balance. Uh, what else do we have to consider? Uh, very much this was discussed in the first question, uh, chapter six. It's all to do with uh, solid settling and um, characteristics. So what we have here is a measuring cylinder, typically one litre measuring cylinder. Uh, the slurry is poured into the measuring cylinder and has an initial height h naught. Okay, then the slurry is allowed to settle. The stopwatch is started, and you notice this interface uh, form. There's nice clean liquid, supernatant liquid, just here, so it's nice and clear. And there's a velocity of the interface as the um, material uh, settles downwards. Okay, so we've got this velocity just just here. Um, typically then we, we, we plot uh, a graph of height of the interface. So that's height of the interface uh, against time. Against time. And we have a nice straight line to start with. This is uh, this region here, which we have whilst the initial concentration is the concentration just below the interface. So, so that gives us a nice constant settling rate. Uh, and eventually we get to a point where it starts to curve, which is somewhere around about just there. So we no longer have the initial concentration underneath the interface. We start to have concentrations that are getting higher and higher. Hence the settling rate becomes slower and slower until eventually it fully settles out at some value just here. Okay, so in other words, the settling velocity is a unique function of the solid concentration. Uh, let me just put that down here. If we call that u naught for the settling velocity, it's a unique function of solid concentration. And that's important because it means that it doesn't matter whether we're in a large diameter thickener or a small measuring cylinder in the laboratory so long as we've got a certain concentration then it'll give us the settling velocity it doesn't matter it's not a function of area it's just a function of concentration okay well in this question we only have one set of data one settling equation and if we're going to want to construct the batch flux curve we need lots of different settling velocities at different concentrations but we can get those from the single settling curve. We did that in the last question, but just to recap, we use this material balance just here. And how do we use this material balance just here? Well, what it says is that the concentration by volume fraction times by the height is going to be equal to uh, any other concentration by volume fraction times by height. Well, how does that work? If we multiply by area of the measuring cylinder this time times by the density then what we're talking about here is something that has the units of kilograms. C is dimensionless, uh, H is meters, A is meter squared so that's meters cubed, kilograms per meter cubed for density so um, uh, we've got meters cubed times by kilograms per meter cubed that gives us kilograms of solids. Okay, so it's a material balance. We're saying that if we start at H naught, just here, which in our particular case, in this question is 3.7%, and let the thing settle, it comes down this settling curve just here. And we get to a certain point, and we imaginary just stop the sedimentation, uh, take off some of the liquid, from the top here, then reshake it, starting now at a different height, a lower height, H1, and let it uh, settle, then it will now settle according to this dashed curve. But by the time it gets to where we'd stopped the set original sedimentation, 
from there onwards, it'll carry on doing exactly the same settling. The settling curve is just the same. So that was a thought process where we let the thing settle, stop, take off some liquid, uh, shook it up again, started the clock again and let it settle down. We can do that many times over, but we don't have to do it as a thought process. All we, all we have to do is draw tangents to this settling curve. And where we have the intercept on that axis there, the, uh, the y-axis, the height axis, uh, that is our projected height, which we would have, and we can calculate what the concentration is from this material balance, because we know that was 3.7%. We know that that was whatever the original starting height is. Uh, that height comes from wherever we put our tangent and it hits the um, height axis. And then that means that we can calculate what the concentration is. So that gives us a whole, that gives us a way of working out lots of settling data from just a single curve according to batch flux theory, that's incompressible solids um, and uh, a few other non-interacting, a few other important parameters. So here are our two equations. The one that is from the material balance, just, just here, that we'll be using, uh, and the flux equation uh, that we looked at to start with. And given those two, we can answer this question. There's obviously a lot of data to consider and some graphical construction with the tangents. So just like we did on the previous question, I'm going to carry on now in Excel. So here is our batch settling data. Maybe just make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, just a little bit bigger helps. Um, OK, so here is our batch settling data. We're starting uh, at 3.7% uh, by volume from 45.6 uh, centimetres height. And that's what's plotted just here. Uh, so you can see that um, all that data is, um, is plotted. There's some extra values here that aren't being used. OK, so that's our settling curve. And that automatically gives us one uh, settling velocity, and that's the settling velocity from of the initial material, the 3.7, because if we just take the gradient of that line there, that'll give us the settling velocity at 3.7%. That's what we mean by uh, we need other settling velocities to do the batch flux curve, we, more than just the one settling velocity. So we get that the same way as we did with the previous uh, problem. Uh, we take lots of tangents and it's entirely arbitrary, really, where we take the tangents. So I've just made life easier by going uh, 35 centimetres, 30 centimetres, 25, 20, 15 centimetres. And um, the calculations that are done here are simply working out the change in height and the change in time uh, to give us the solid settling velocities that we see in this particular um, column just, just there. Uh, OK, well, given those heights, those, those starting heights, uh, we can work out what the original uh, concentrations are. So it's actually these starting heights that are the important ones. Um, so given those starting heights, using our material balance, which is, which is just here, uh, that I've just been talking about, enables us to work out what the concentrations are, which is this column here. Uh, that was the original concentration. These are the concentrations where, that uh, would have been present if we'd started at 35, 30, 25, 20 or 15 centimetres as our initial settling heights. So 15 centimetres with the same amount of solids as what we started with, uh, with the 3.7% at 45.6 centimetres. Uh, that would be 11.2% solids concentration starting at 15 centimetres. We'd follow this line just here, get to this curve here, and then carry on in just the same way as the lower concentration did. Whew. Well, that's a lot of words. Let's see it in action. Um, so these velocities are coming from the gradients of these tangents that have been drawn to the settling curve. So these velocities have now been 
copied and pasted uh, to the, the uh, batch flux curve below. Uh, let's have a see. Yeah, there we are. There are the batch flux um, calculations just down here. So here are the velocities. Let's just reproduce the velocities at those concentrations. Flux is simply concentration times by velocity. So it's the product of those two. Uh, and that's true for each one of these. And we've plotted the batch flux out just here. So here is the batch flux curve uh, plotted out for our system in this question. And just like the previous question, we're looking for a tangent to the batch flux curve. And it's a tangent to the batch flux curve that goes through the underflow concentration. Now, if we were designing a thickener, we would normally have a value of uh, or a desire for a certain underflow concentration. We'd make a tangent to the batch flux curve going through that underflow concentration and come up with the value of what's called TCU from something that we use in the flux balance. Slightly different here, though, because we can work out TCU from a, a material balance of what's going into the thickener and the thickener dimensions itself, because we have the area of the thickener. So as we already have the area of the thickener, we know what the feed rate is, we know what C0 is, we can calculate what TCU is. So we, so this is sort of in reverse to what was done in the previous question. This is where we're calculating TCU from the actual running data, the feed concentration, uh, the feed flow rate, and the existing area of the thickener. It's made slightly more complicated because the feed rate is given in mass units per day, 2,400 metric tons per day. Um, clearly 1,000, sorry, 100 metric tons per hour. Um, so we need to convert that into a feed rate that is in meters cubed per hour. Well, we can do that from knowing that it's 10%, 10% of that is solids. So uh, that uh, works out at uh, 2.8 kilograms per second. Okay, uh, so that would have been what, 200 and, uh, yeah, 2.8 kilograms per second and 25 kilograms per second of water, of liquid. Okay. That gives you 20, uh, yeah, it's around about, that's, that's still around about 10% uh, solids going in, is what, what we would expect. And if we convert these mass flow rates in solids and liquid into volume flows, that's 0 0.025 meters cubed per second of liquid, not 0 0.001 meters cubed per second of uh, solids. So the total feed rate is 0.025. It's the summation of those two, 0 0.0260 meters cubed per second. So we've now got the flow rate in the volume terms, which is what we need. So uh, coming back to this equation up here, then we know F in the volume flow rate terms. We know C0, it's 0 0.037. We know what the area is. It's an air, a thickness that's got a diameter of five meters. That gives us a thickness area of 20 uh, meters squared, simply by pi d squared over four. So d is five. So that is uh, obviously going to be 25 pi divided by four, gives us that 20 square meter thickness area. And from our flux balance, that means our value for TCU is just about five times 10 to the minus five. So that is what we are using to fix our batch flux curve tangent. Rather than the underflow concentration, which is what we normally do for a design, we've got a fixed TCU value coming from our flux balance and our given operating conditions. And we still have to make this a tangent to the batch flux curve. And in this case, we're interested in coming down here and we discover that the underflow concentration for this tangent to the batch flux curve is 0 
just there, the underflow concentration by volume is 0 0.074. And if we do a per meter cubed of um, underflow material, then we know that that will be 0 0.074 meters cubed of solids. Uh, and as it was per meter cubed, the amount of liquid present will be 1 minus 0 0.074 or 0 0.926 meters cubed. So that is the um, so if we know the volumes and uh, multiply by the densities, which is what we're doing here, then we know that that's 215 kilograms of solids. That's 926 kilograms worth of liquid. That gives us an underflow concentration, as the question says, of 90, as the answer says in the question, of 19%. So that's where the 19% by mass comes from. So we've answered the question then. We're expecting, given the operating conditions specified, uh, an underflow concentration of 7.4% by volume or 19% by, by mass. I, I think the question doesn't quite go far enough because using uh, a material balance, we can actually also come up with some underflow rate and overflow rate, the final two design parameters. Um, given this particular underflow concentration, which <coughs> by sheer coincidence is twice the feed concentration. So the feed concentration comes in at 3.7% and the underflow concentration uh, comes out at twice that, 7.4%. So uh, because of that, we get an underflow rate of 47 meters cubed per hour. You know, we're doubling the underflow Sorry, we're doubling the concentration by using the thickener. And actually, we also get, by sheer coincidence, the same 47 metres cubed per hour in the overflow. So that is that is just coincidental. It's not These are not normally related in such a way. Uh, if the batch flux curve had just happened to be in a different direction and moved the underflow concentration to be something other than um, 0.7, let's say 0.1, then of course we'd get totally different underflow and overflow rates. So it is only coincidental that they happen to be the same in this instance. Um, so if your boss was saying to you, what would happen if we use this existing thing? The, the reply to your boss is, well, we, we should expect a 19% by mass uh, underflow. Uh, we should have to we should expect to pump out 47 meters cubed per hour uh, of the underflow and we should expect 47 meters cubed per hour of the overflow clean liquid coming from the thickener so that is basically determining all the parameters running parameters for this repurposed thickener operating on this flocculated material um, it's an interesting question because it's using flux theory not for the purposes of the design of a thickener but for the purposes of understanding the an existing thickener and what happens if we were to change conditions maybe the feed rate uh, maybe the material that's being fed to it um, it enables us to work the calculation backwards to see things like um, the um, new underflow concentration um, and the actual rates coming out of the thickener in the overflow and the underflow. So it's a, it's a useful technique for um, for testing those things out uh, on a spreadsheet. And that all comes from just one single batch settling test. The data might be more reliable if several tests were done rather than rely on this projection, but the theory behind the data analysis uh, is just the same. Okay, that's it then.